Peace and blessings. This is your brother Gabar, and this is I Am Fit Podcast. Are you fit to go God's way? Get out of my way. I'm going God's way. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So I want to um, have a, a conversation um, about something that happened this past Sunday. Uh, on the ninth, that I'm kind of concerned. I'm not panicking, but I'm concerned. And it made me um, pause. Uh, we shouldn't panic. Everything is fine. Um, the Saudi Arabian um, family that one of the most richest family in the world, or probably the richest, I don't know. We don't know um, their wealth is, wi- is, is within the trillions, so we don't know if it's beyond trillions, how many trillions, but their you know, billionaires was like so yesterday for them. And um, Shalom, Shalom, chatting, okay, live streaming out, okay, first time, okay, thank you, thank you for your support, I appreciate you, make sure you hit the like and subscribe to help the, help the algorithm. So, Saudi Arabia, um, the Saudi family had a deal with the United States of America that, uh, and we're going to go see some videos, I want to I give you um, kind of like the whole Combat all, all, every information that is out there. I took some time to make sure that this is all correct. I'm going to show you some articles uh, and some news segment that is talking about this particular subject. But the Saudi Arabian um, government um, had um, a 50 year or over 50 years uh, se- agreement that. The United States government will protect the Saudi family, will give them military aid, uh, will protect them and guide them in any form of protection they need be. Um, They did not protect the Saudi Arabian people or the Arabian people, but they cut a deal with the Saudi family. Um. You know, many people may or may not know, you know, in 9-11, um, Osama bin Laden was related or is somehow was related to the Saudi family to some degree. Um, and the Saudis are so um, protected by the United States government that in 9-11, President Bush uh, secretly uh, helped to take the Saudi family outside of the United States for their protection. Uh, this is, is main news. This is not conspiracy theory. Uh, the United States always had a, a, co- a close relationship with the Saudi family because they cut a deal uh, over 50 years ago to tell the Saudi family, we will protect you if you only sell your oil using American dollars. So that put the American dollar as the world currency because countries, when you notice, when you go to other countries, to Thailand, to Dominican Republic, to Africa, I know Africa's not a country, it's a continent, but you get get what I'm saying. Um, um, In different parts of the world, the dollar goes far. Many people like expats retired. If you're making two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars in your retirement, and you go to Thailand, you go to Puerto Rico, I mean, uh, Dominican Republic, maybe Mexico, uh, Africa, you could be able, you could live well, better than here. That's where the dollar is so um, valuable across the world because the Saudi Arabian oil uh, is one of the leading countries providing oil in that part of the world. So the dollars are valuable. This past uh, Sunday, uh, on the 9th, that contract expired. 
and the Saudi Arabian prince decided not to renew it, to open the floodgates to allow, to accept not only the American dollar, but the yen, the, the, you know, uh, the, the Indian dollar, I don't know what it's called, the Russian dollar, I don't know what it's called. Uh, anybody could buy Saudi Arabian oil now. The dollar does not have that contract anymore. Don't panic, but we need to talk. We need to have a conversation. As Christians, as Americans, um, as, but more importantly, as Christians. So I want to uh, play some videos. This was a documentary um, about, it was put together about um, during the time of President Obama. So this documentary goes about eight, eight or nine years to kind of, but it, it breaks down and explain the, the contract between Saudi Arabia and America or the contract that used to be. Okay? So I want to play this video, uh, Fair Use. This is a documentary called The Cold of War. Um, you could probably get it out there. Uh, but this is a, a, a promotion of that documentary. And well, what, what they were concerned eight years ago, nine years ago, we live in it right now. The petrodollar is no more. Fair use, fair use. The petrodollar is actually a device invented by Kissinger and Nixon. The standard of living of all Americans can be traced back to here, the vast oil-rich deserts of Saudi Arabia. In the early 70s, after the Arab crisis happened with the oil embargoes, OPEC basically tripled the price of oil to the Western world. And at that time, America realized that they were vulnerable because they were importing about 70% of all the oil they consumed. To secure a reliable foreign source of oil, U.S. President Richard Nixon sent his Secretary of State and National Security Advisor Henry Kissinger to Saudi Arabia for a secret meeting. The result was a pact that still stands to this day. If Saudi Arabia, which at the time was the world's largest producer of oil, would sell the oil in U.S. dollars, America would defend Saudi Arabia and make sure the House of Saud would stay in power. As a direct result of this U.S.-Saudi agreement, all other oil-producing nations also adopted the dollar as the de facto medium of exchange. Demand for it increased exponentially all over the world, and soon it had a new name the petrodollar. Your currency is only as strong as the demand for it, just like anything else, the supply and demand. Why the petrodollar is important, it causes a demand for the US dollar. A lot of Americans don't realize that over 70% of all the $100 bills in the world are actually outside of the US. There's more $100 bills in Russia than there are in America. This stockpile of US dollars in countries around the world is because oil is bought and sold using the greenback. If oil starts trading in non-petrodollars, such as gold or a basket of currencies, or if China and Russia start trading in yuan and ruble rather than U.S. dollars, that demand isn't there. And the way of life for the average American will be done. It will be worse than the Great Depression. To date, Anyone who's potentially threatened the status of the petrodollar hasn't fared well. <laughs> Libyan strongman Muammar Gaddafi publicly pushed for a pan-African gold-backed currency that he would trade for Libya's oil. He was killed during a U.S.-backed revolution in 2011. <laughs> and just a few short years before, Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein advocated selling oil for euros. At this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq. The U.S. invaded under the guise of looking for WMDs. Iraq did not have any weapons of mass destruction. And interestingly enough, 
After the Americans invaded, took over, put in their own government, the whole concept of selling oil in euros never surfaced again. Today, many countries resent the current petrodollar system, and their leading spokesperson is none other than Russian President Vladimir Putin. Americans should be very worried about what Putin can do. There is a new Cold War going on. It is the colder war. That is exactly what's going on. And who's in the center of this push? Vladimir Putin. And the petrodollar is so crucial to the colder war. The only thing holding America right now at the top is the petrodollar. And let me make it very clear. If the petrodollar dies, so does America as a superpower. All right. So that's basically the pet. The, you know, I know that you guys heard the what was going on. I don't know if you did. Um, but, um, just let me know if, if there was any issues, but I, uh, I'm going to play some other videos. I'm going to, um, basically, um, get into, okay. Why is Saudi Arabia doing this? First of all, right? Why is Saudi Arabia doing this? Why is um, the Saudi family who contract protection money, basically protection, um, from the most powerful country in the world, the po most powerful military? Um, are they getting tired of America um, with all these sanctions? Uh, are they concerned with the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians, and that's what's making them um, back away. They're pissed off of America. I don't know. Are they bluffing? Are they they are they just doing this to scare America? But they're gonna eventually sign the contract and renew it. But they want demands. They have some demands. Um. There's a lot of talk, and you know, there's a lot of. Um. Rumors going around in regards of the Saudi family uh, and their relationship, right? Um, the Saudi family, um, you know. As a matter of fact, let's get let's see here. Let's see. Let me let me let me play some videos here because I want to play. Uh, but let me just go into the history. And I had it in my other computer, but it's, it's people saying it's coming out uh, choppy, right? So, um, let me show you guys this video right here, okay? This is uh, Putin, you know, a few years ago, um, operating um, or, or greeting the Saudi prince, okay? So, I want to show you guys real quick this particular video because they are extremely uh i would say um i would say uh touchy touchy you know uh, uh friendly extremely friendly right so i want to play this video real quick fair use to show you the saudi family and president putin fair use See, they're hanging out. They're good friends. And, and you can see Trump in the back there. This is a few years ago. So we, we, we don't know if this would have happened uh, if President w w Trump was president. I don't know. But this could have been a plan. They were even talking about it even back then, right? So this could have probably be a scenario that, you know, um, Maybe Russia, China, and, and, and the Saudis are cutting a deal and cutting up, you know, and, and that is going to hurt America. Okay.
So I want to play this video real quick, right? And and I'm going to show you guys. Uh, this is was this is what you know is being reported. I trust this journalist. This is I believe what's her name, um, Kim Hollow Hollison or Holloway, I believe Hollison. Let me see. Let me make sure. Uh, let me get her name because I, I I you know I would like for you to subscribe to her. Um, let me hold on. What is uh Hyverson? Hyverson. Her name is Kim Hyverson, right? And um, she's been around for a while. She's independent, and uh, this is what she is basically reporting on this subject. Fair use, fair use. Let me. Petro dollar agreement between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia has reportedly ended. Uh, I I would think that we're not going to see a new reserve currency rising for probably another eight to 10 years at minimum, but I could totally be wrong on that. The world is moving fast. Uh, things have they, things move way faster nowadays than they did 10 years ago, even 20 years ago, certainly 40 or 50 years ago. Things are moving much more, much quickly, or, uh, much quicker now with the digital age. So it could be that countries band together a lot faster and strengthen a different currency quicker. And even just the smallest amount of a dent going into the reserve currency. So let's say the United States dollar is still the reserve currency mostly. So instead of 100% world currency, we drop down to 70% world currency, reserve currency, because there's another currency that people are starting to take up or even 25% or even 10%. We're going to feel that as Americans, unless these banks start doing a bunch of other crap that they really shouldn't be doing uh, to try to, you know, prevent the too big to fail scenario. Right. So this could probably be a bluff by the Saudi family. Uh, so we don't know. Um, like I said, don't panic. Um, but according to all the experts, this is bad. For America and the American dollar. That's why I'm having a meeting going God's way. If you want to be part of that meeting, you have to be a man. Uh, send me an email. All the descriptions below. MGGW at Gmail. MGGW144 at gmail.com. We're going to have a discussion about this. More importantly, uh, just prepare. Plan. Um, I was having a conversation with my wife uh, and my daughter this week about this particular subject. And we are going to um, do some moves. We're going. We're going to. We're going to. Um, we had a plan. We had a meeting, and we're going to. Um, let me just stop this here real quick. Two seconds. Let me just fix this. Boom. Okay. Okay. Let me fix this. And I think. Good, to some degree. Okay. So I think the issue is that um, if the American dollar is no longer the world currency uh, and we are Americans living overseas, being supported by American dollars, right, um, that cost of living is going to be uh, cut in half, or I mean, uh, not cut in half. Excuse me. It's going to double. So let's just say your pension was, you know, three thousand um, dollars. Now you have to cut your costs half because the cost of living is going to go higher. If your pension is six thousand dollars or five thousand, um, this is not good for Americans. This is not good for. Um, the dollar, um, the 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 reporter Kim, she said that uh, she doesn't like to uh, predict, but from her research, um, it's about um, you know eight to nine years, maybe a decade until we see um, a shift because there needs to be another dollar, another currency competing. There's too much dollars, American dollars, out there. So it's not going to be effective right away. And 
the reason why it hasn't really been promoted in mainstream media, it could probably be um, a a non-concern for America because there's two exports that America have. The first one is the dollar. You know, China, they're good building cars and cheap labor. Japan, they're like the leading in in chips and and technology. Uh, India is good, you know, what they do. Um, You know, you got countries that produce, right? America doesn't produce anything outside of the dollar. And the number two is the military. The dollar is backed up by the military. Um, They just passed a law that if you are between the age of 18 to 25, they're going to automatically enlist you into the military. What is America um, preparing for? Why is the mainstream media not really reporting this in a great deal? I looked. I didn't see anything in CNN. I didn't see anything in Fox, right? Um, I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know why they haven't reported the news. Um, but this is going to affect us. And this could be, right, the beginning of sorrows mentioned in the Bible, in the book of Matthew chapter 24, right? This could be that in particular, right? So um, because when things get expensive and the costs of living doubles, triples, you know, and and I I do not know if America is going to come back from this. I don't know their plan because, check this out, guys. The United States government uh, walked away from the gold standard at, I think, in the... Uh, they began to start walking around, walking away from the gold standard. I think it's somewhere in the in in, in the in the thirties, in the forties. But they officially, I think, in nineteen seventy three. And this deal where America and the Saudi family came in in nineteen seventy four. If it wasn't for this deal, the United States government or the United States dollar would have been probably not as powerful if they didn't cut this deal. And this is the ironic thing as, uh, you know, as Christians, you know, they live in America, right? People that believe in the Bible, people that believe that the prophecy is going to fulfill, right? People that understand that says, you know, get out of her, my people, that you will not partake upon her plagues, Revelation 18. Those people, I'm speaking to those people. People believe, you know, uh, I'm speaking to the Christians that don't believe in the left behind doctrine. That's, that's been this debunked several times. You know, all through the Bible, Christ says, if they did it to me, they're going to do it to you. Right? If, 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 you know, those that endure unto the end, the same will be safe. You have to endure. Right? So, though I'm speaking to those Christians. I'm speaking to people that are... Um, Understanding that the Bible is a real book. Uh, the spirit of Christ is the spirit of prophecy. And I'm speaking to those people that understand that we have to see, we have to look for the signs. Is this a sign? Right? If we have a few years, right? Some say three, some say seven, some say, you know, ten. We don't know. Right? If the, if the best case scenario is 10, the worst case scenario is one year. I, I even heard that uh, uh, scenario. Let's cut somewhere in the middle, maybe five. We may just have five years. If Saudi Arabia is not bluffing, if Saudi Arabia is just, you know, um, want to um, create a, 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 a scenario that, you know, hey, America, you know, you don't have all the power here. Hey, America, I have leverage here. 
you know, I don't like you, you know, censoring, I mean, uh, censoring these certain countries. They cannot use the dollar or, or trade with, with us or you or you have so much control here. We need to shift the balance of power. I do not know why Saudi Arabia is not renewing. They must have a plan. They must have a reason. We don't know yet. We're all just guessing. Like I said, this could be a bluff. I don't know. Uh, I'm not scared, but I'm concerned. I'm not panicking, but I am curious, deeply curious on the outcome of this, folks. And let me just say this. Like I show you, know, and I show you guys in that, doc, you know, since that documentary, The Cold of War, um, I apologize for some issues there. I'll probably replay it. But at that time, and as as far as I can remember, every expert in the history of experts that have spoken and have said that, hey, America, if they walk away from the petrodollar or the world walks away from the petrodollar or the Saudi Arabian walks away from the petrodollar, it's the end for America. That's what I've been, I've been hearing. But I was always saying to myself, there's no way in God's green earth the Saudi Arabian family will walk away from this deal. And there's no way that America will walk away from this deal because it will keep the dollar strong. That would never happen. That's what I was saying back in my mind. I like, I don't see that happening. It's a win-win for both of them. So I thought, so what's going on with the Saudis? What's going on with the family there? What's going on? Um, do they feel that they don't need America anymore? Do you think, do they think they cut a deal with other allies? And they're like, yeah, hey, I don't need America. America's not as strong as it used to be. I don't know. Right? Uh, there's a, a, uh, a decline on the American population. There's a decline in the Euro Western European population. Uh, even Russia, China is having you know issues with 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 uh, well, China not so much because they they, they grow on but uh, and, and but they they want to continue growing. China has become so huge in numbers, they do not even need America as they used to because they could sell to their own people and do well. It's not that I'm concerned. It's not that I'm scared. But, um, babe, Rebecca's calling me. To check, let's see what it is. Um, and it's not like I'm, I'm scared, but I'm concerned. Uh, uh, this could be a problem, folks. This could be a huge problem. So what to do, right? Because I'm about solution. I'm about solution. I'm about... Um, Let's get things going. So I spoke to my family. Um, we um, discussed several things. And I'm not going to get into what we're going to be doing in detail. But basically, my advice to everyone is um, look at your expenses. Start living be beneath your means. I think certain family that are equally yoked, should maybe start considering living in the same roof to cut certain expenses. Um, I'm speaking to uh, individuals that may have the ability to be due citizens. Um, I'm, a, I'm a citizen of the Dominican Republic as well as a United States citizen because I since my mother and my father were born uh, in the Dominican Republic, they were natural citizens, uh, the Dominican Republic has a law that if one of your parents were born in that country, you could come back and, and become a citizen. I did that, I think, about, I don't know, it's like 12 years ago. Um, I'm encouraging my daughter to do the same. Um, also, within the... Um, the Latino and Caribbean community, fair use. If you are of Latin American descent and you have these surnames in your tree, you might just have Sephardic Jew in you. And if you can prove lineage and connect this to Portugal, then you actually qualify 
to get Portuguese citizenship, which is like a golden ticket, in my opinion, because they're a European nation country, which means that you could live, work, and own property in any of the European nation countries. So let's get into it. If you've got Rodriguez with a Z, Nunes, De Silva, Pinto, Suarez. Rodriguez is on top, baby, number one. And Rodriguez is a Hebrew Israelite name. Uh, Rod Riguez. Ra means the rod or stick or staff. And Riguez means to roll over or to pass over to the next generation. That's where the name comes from. But it is Hebrew Israelite or what people will call Jewish. Uh, the Sephardic Jews were people of color in Spain. They got kicked out in 1492. That was us. And if you could prove descendants uh, of the, the Sephardic Jews that got kicked out, Portugal, Spain, will allow you to come back instant. Uh, you know, you have to obviously do some paperwork or what have you, some evidence or what have you. Um, and I'm hearing people are doing it. If they have the last name, if you do a DNA and you have some Portuguese blood in you, that, 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 that's um, uh, sufficient. And the reason why is because Europe, they are declining in population. So they want more, they, they, they are, um, you know, um, encouraging people to, you know, to repopulate, right? So we as Latinos could probably take advantage of this. That's what I'm saying, right? Fair use. Lopez, Lopez Calderon, uh, Enriquez. Is that Enrique? I don't know. Enriquez? Whatever. Uh, Mendez with an S, Mercado, Nunez with a Z, Fernandez, De Lima, Duarte, Rivera, Navarro, Maya, De Toledo, De Lucina, and Leon. Now, check your trees if you got those and you can prove your lineage. You can go online, look up how to qualify for Portuguese citizenship by descent and contact a company that will help you out and get yourself that citizenship. So there you have it, right? So there you have it. So um, just do your research. Um, I, I told my daughter, get on it, get me posted, um, and you are able to go back and, you know, get different citizenship. So technically or, 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 or theoretically, I could get a pass. I, could, I already have a passport of the Dominican Republic. I'm working on getting my United States pa passport. I could all, so if I apply for this uh, particular um, visa, right, I will be able to become a citizen of, of Portugal, Spain, right, and also the uh, Dominican Republic. So I have both, um, I will say, um, visa, right, or passports, right, or citizenship. And if America collapsed, the dollar collapse is not as strong as it used to be. You know, uh, America becomes like a um, a place that is not safe anymore. And the Bible said we're going to be like vagabonds, I mean, or or or, or uh, wanderers, right? Uh, from one place to another, right? Christ says if you be prosecuted in one city, go to the next. So, as Bible believers, this is my message to you guys. Um, prepare, talk with your family. Men, be mentally ready. Um, sisters, it's time for you to get under a righteous man. This whole, I'm doing it by myself, those days are gone, and they're still going to be over. Get yourself a righteous man, and if he's married with a wife, speak to his wife, speak to that man, and maybe consider uh, sharing a man to for survival. We're in that time. This could be nothing. This could be something. This could be the end or the beginning of the end. Um, so I am... If you are of Latin America... Let me play... I want to pitch you another video. I want to play you another video that... It, it talks about the same thing, fair use, fair use. If you are of Latin American descent, you've got two options for getting yourself dual citizenship with Spain. Option number one, if you have citizenship in any of these countries, Argentina, Dominican Republic, Panama, Bolivia, Ecuador, Paraguay, Chile, El Salvador, Peru, Colombia, Guatemala, Philippines, Costa Rica, Honduras, Puerto Rico, Cuba, Mexico, or Venezuela, for that one, you actually need to be a legal resident for two years and certain last names 
can fast track you and you can have her done in six months. The other way, much easier. But for this one, you do not have to prove lineal descent. Like it's an automatic. According to this website, which was last updated in May of 2024, you can get Spanish citizenship by descent if you can connect your lineage to a Spanish Jew. And though most Latin Americans do have those Portuguese Jewish lines, the Spanish ones you will have a lot more of. This one does not require that you even live there ever. You can get your citizenship and boom, dual citizenship for you. Which one are you going to get? All right. So. Don't panic, but you have to have a plan. If you ignore this and the worst case scenario begin to happen, then in a few years, you got to start noticing start getting more expensive, more expensive. Insurances get rises, double, triple, the, and so forth, so on, right? Uh, you're in a city that is very expensive, like New York, like myself. You have to have a backup plan. You have to have a plan B, a plan C, a plan D. You have to prepare. You have to uh, look at other possibilities outside of America if this thing is real, if this thing is a real thing. If we, we, uh, we, uh, we are, are in the middle of, of us seeing the collapse of America, is this the beginning of the end? This is, this is, this is um, something that um, we've seen right before our eyes, and, we, and, we, and we're um, you're simply ignoring it, right? And because the media doesn't want, or the powers that be doesn't want us to panic, right? Um, I don't know the answer why the mainstream media is not really uh, having a report on this subject matter. Um, this will be front page news. This is be they should be asking Biden what his, is he's going to do? What's going on here? What is his plan? What is his you know? Uh, can the dollar survive this? Right? If if we just simply uh, lose twenty five percent of the dollar value, the dollar uh, buying power. That's a lot. That that if your if your bills increase twenty five percent, could you handle that? Right? This is a question. If your bills, um. are doubling, tripling. If your food, um, milk gets expensive, uh, you know, everything that gets, like I said, we don't make anything here, right? We don't make anything here. So uh, is, is those jobs going to return? But can we be able to afford it because we can't pay the workers because the dollar is not worth anything? I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. I put the... Link below if people want to come in uh, through uh, through um, StreamYard. You can call in. You know StreamYard. You could use it as, a, as a number, or you could you could call you could come in as a guest. It's up to you. I'm not panicking, but I'm concerned, and I'm going to be having a meeting next Sunday with some of the brothers from Men Going God's Way. Um, if you want to be part of that meeting, call. You, we have to talk before then. Um, I have to bet, bet you see if you're the right fit for us. Um, is this going to be just a quick, hey, uh, you guys, what do you guys think about this? If this is important to you, this, this is the reason why it should be important to you. Do we have a plan? Do you have a plan? And then we could all come together and come with a, a plan to help each other out. God forbid if the worst uh, comes true. Like I said, some analysts says we have as short as a year. Other analysts says we had as long as 10 years so let's compromise between three to five right have a plan just in case you have to walk away um my advice to Benny brothers i already uh discussed this with my family get yourself plane tickets that you can hold to exit if you need to exit because what you don't want to do you don't want to wait until it's too late and then once it gets so expensive, right, that you will not be able 
to uh, even afford a ticket because what used to be some, you know, maybe a few hundred dollars, now it's a few thousand dollars. Unless you got a wife and kids, a few thousand dollars times three, four, five, that, that could go up fairly quickly. Get your tickets now. Hold them. Talk to someone and say, how much is, is it cost to have an open ticket? Or if I want to change a date, how much is it going to cost me? Or oh, $30. You know, even if that doubles in two, three years to $60 uh, or $90, I could live with that. Get your plane tickets. Get your passports. Have multiple passports if you can. Um, look into do citizenship. Just like I said, just in case. I'm hope I'm wrong. I'm hope that a year from now we're laughing about this. Remember what I was, you know, panicking. Remember what I was, you know, um, you know, had this show. It was, you know, nothing. It was all bluff. So for so on. I hope this is fake news. Because if the dollar goes, so does America. So I hope the Saudi Arabian family were bluffing. And if they're not, this is a sign. This is a sign from God. This is a sign. Exactly. We have to be pilgrims on earth, right? It's time for us to be pilgrims. It's time for us to uh, be in a scenario that we are um, networking. We're networking and brothers, if you're not with your family, um, get with your family. Or if your enemies is within your family, you have to have a long conversation with yourself. Christ says that the greatest foe will be those in your, in your own household. So if you have any issues with people in your own household, uh, a father and a son, a mother and a daughter, uh, husbands and wives not getting along, it's time to kill that. It's time to kill that. Because if this is the beginning of the end, if this is something that gas price is going to increase, food price is going to increase, the dollar's not going to be worth anywhere. You go to overseas with your family. You, say, you, you send $100 bills. $100 bills. They, they, they will say, well, do you have Canadian money? Do you have euro? We don't accept American dollars anymore. It doesn't have any buying power. Or you go into DR or Thailand and you pay $7, $12 for a Pepsi or a slice. Right? So, this is not time to panic. This is time to prepare. Um, if, if we in a situation that um, we're wrong and we prepare, hey, better be prepared and not need, right? Better have something that you don't need it than to need something that you don't have. Tonight, you should have a meeting with your family about this conversation. Do the research and what is the worst case scenario, what is the best case scenario, right? Continue to keep watching what is the response of the United States government in regards of this. The petrodollar is actually a device invented by Kissinger and Nixon. The standard of living of all Americans can be traced back to here, the vast oil-rich deserts of Saudi Arabia. In the early 70s, after the Arab crisis happened with the oil embargoes, OPEC basically tripled the price of oil to the Western world. And at that time, America realized that they were vulnerable because they were importing about 70% of all the oil they consumed. To secure a reliable foreign source of oil, U.S. President Richard Nixon sent his Secretary of State and National Security Advisor Henry Kissinger to Saudi Arabia for a secret meeting. 
the result was a pact that still stands to this day. If Saudi Arabia, which at the time was the world's largest producer of oil, would sell the oil in US dollars, America would defend Saudi Arabia and make sure the House Assad would stay in power. As a direct result of this US-Saudi agreement, all other oil-producing nations also adopted the dollar as the de facto medium of exchange. Demand for it increased exponentially all over the world, and soon it had a new name, the petrodollar. Your currency is only as strong as the demand for it, just like anything else, the supply and demand. Why the petrodollar is important, it causes a demand for the US dollar. A lot of Americans don't realize that over 70% of all the $100 bills in the world are actually outside of the U.S. There's more $100 bills in Russia than there are in America. This stockpile of U.S. dollars in countries around the world is because oil is bought and sold using the greenback. If oil starts trading in non-petrodollars, such as gold or a basket of currencies, or if China and Russia start trading in yuan and ruble rather than US dollars, that demand isn't there. And the way of life for the average American will be done. It will be worse than the Great Depression. To date, anyone who's potentially threatened the status of the petrodollar hasn't fared well. Libyan strongman Muammar Gaddafi publicly pushed for a pan-African gold-backed currency that he would trade for Libya's oil. He was killed during a U.S.-backed revolution in 2011. And just a few short years before, Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein advocated selling oil for euros. At this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq. The U.S. invaded under the guise of looking for WMDs. Iraq did not have any weapons of mass destruction. And interestingly enough, after the Americans invaded, took over, put in their own government, the whole concept of selling oil in euros never surfaced again. Today, many countries resent the current petrodollar system and their leading spokesperson is none other than Russian President Vladimir Putin. Americans should be very worried about what Putin can do. There is a new Cold War going on. It is the colder war. That is exactly what's going on. And who's in the center of this push? Vladimir Putin. And the petrodollar is so crucial to the colder war. The only thing holding America right now at the top is the petrodollar. And let me make it very clear, if the petrodollar dies, so does America as a superpower.